Hello folks and welcome to Snow Runner, my own self-imposed hardcore mode. And I forgot to turn my computer down. Let's take care of that. <clears throat> so you should have seen the in the beginning of the video the hardcore rules that I'm following. Why am I doing this? Well, I've got another playthrough and I am three quarters of the way done on the Russian maps and I've found that it's gotten really easy. It's basically rinse and repeat and I was using not cheats but I was using some of the things in the game to make it even easier uh, like recovering to the garage when I'm finished with a mission and just buying, uh, getting gas at gas stations uh, things like that so I wanted to make it a little more tough uh, make it a little more uh, make it to where I've got to think a little more about these missions and I've got to admit in the beginning it was a little bit rough but uh, now that I'm getting used to it, I'm actually enjoying it a lot more than I was than I am my other playthrough. So if you get a chance, if you're playing this game, try some of this stuff. And especially if you have gotten to the end and you may think about starting a new gameplay. I did hear that the developers are supposed to be working on a hardcore mode and when that hardcore mode comes out I'll try that. So we'll just see how everything goes. And right now you can see up in the upper right hand corner I am setting up for a mission called the Tin Hut. And that's over on Drummond Island. There's a big bridge over there that I need to construct. And don't let what's up in the upper right hand corner fool you. It is not just one beam and one concrete slab. There's also a second part of the mission that will not show up until you complete this part of the mission. And it will require another metal beam. And it will require concrete blocks. So why am I taking the Fleet Star up here? Well, because there's some other missions up here that's going to require me to lift some heavy containers. And... The Fleet Star matched up with the heavy crane here is a really, really stable platform. Uh, Fleet Star can go anywhere on the map. It's kind of low, so it's not that top heavy. And it just works really well with the crane here. When the when I'm using the crane. Again, it's very stable. So I like this setup. And I have even used this setup over on the Russia maps. And it works very well. And I've used it quite a lot in Alaska. Well, not quite a lot, but I have used it in Alaska. And let's stop here because... Okay, I didn't screw up. Uh, I need this trailer up here. I can get everything that I need for this mission over on Drummond Island, except for the concrete blocks. So I will need to get concrete blocks up at the top of the map here before I take the tunnel over. And in order to haul the concrete blocks... I am going to need this. So 
so why don't I just come up here and buy a trailer? And it's part of my hardcore rules. I can sell trailers. I cannot buy trailers. I have to use the trailers I find on the map. And I thought about just going ahead and getting rid of those. But I think what I will do is take them up here and just drop them off. I'll unload them in case at some point I need these. I will have them up here and I won't have to go all the way down to, where, to the uh, service area to pick them up and bring them back. Now I did pass an empty trailer. I could have picked it up. And... I thought about picking it up, and I thought, no, I kept passing this trailer here, and it's not doing me any good, and I have trailers scattered around the map, so I'm going to need to start consolidating those trailers. So I'll go ahead and take this one with me. I think the last little <clears throat> micro update, or it was 5.0 update, but I think it made either the trailers heavier so the trucks move slower and don't pull them as easy uh, with or without weight, or it made the roads uh, more friction or something. Because the vehicles don't seem to be moving as well as they did before the 5.0 update. Uh, they just don't seem to have the power and able to pull things as easily. Which I'm not complaining about it. Well, maybe a little bit. Uh, it just seems that... I'm not getting places as fast or as easily as I did before the update. Now, a truck moving by itself, with nothing attached to it, still moves pretty good. But I do notice a slight difference when you have a load on. Is it enough to make me mad and want to quit playing the game? Well, shoot, no. This adds another element. Don't be doing that. I was just talking about how stable a platform you were. Do not need you tipping over. And this crane on the Western Star is even more stable. And I kind of like the crane on the Western Star better than I like it on the Fleet Star. But I don't want to saddle the Western Star with this crane all the time. Uh, the issue with the Western Star and this crane is pulling other trailers. It'll do it, but I like the Western Star with the flatbed, the blue flatbed trailer. So I don't want to change that out. Because this truck can pull the blue semi trailers but it doesn't do it very well because the low hitch is so far forward that the back of the frame of the truck will hit the bottom of the trailer if you do any kind of elevation change and it will bring the front end of the truck off the ground. 
So this is not a good vehicle to pull a trailer with, uh, pull a semi trailer with, unless you're on something like this, which is nice, flat, uh, even ground. So uh, we are, <clears throat> excuse me, we are almost up here. And I need to find a place to drop this load. Right there looks like a good place. <clears throat> It's out of the way, but it is easy for me to get to it if I need to. And pop cargo. All right. Let's lift it up that way. So, I'm going to come over here and I moved the other truck out to hook it up to the uh, maintenance trailer because I do have the Fleet Star, and, or not Fleet Star, but the Western Star and it's already on Drummond Island, but it needed some repairs before it went over so I went ahead and did that. management concrete blocks so that's what I need activate my anchors and I'll just go ahead and load it with this truck yeah, let's go around this way And the good thing with this trailer, or this uh, crane, is that I can load this trailer up without detaching it. Whereas the little crane, you cannot. You have to detach the trailer 
in order to pour a little bit closer. here come out of here another concrete block oh, back in the prey mode Before I put the crane away, make sure I pack the cargo. And it is packed. Store the crane and I'm on my way. One other thing to note. Something that uh, I found out. Because the other truck here. Let me go ahead and stop my engine. Change trucks. Now this truck, it can hold the little crane and the flatbed on it. Because you will need something. If I didn't have the flatbed on here and I went over to load something, it would not allow me to load anything. It wouldn't even show me what I can load. Because there's no cargo slots for me to load. So you have to put this on it. And it will pull a trailer, but if you look, there is very little clearance there. So sharp curves, uh, it will not pull the trailer, it'll buckle it and try to flip you over. So this will work if you're moving something small, forward or backwards, or even something big, small, forward and backwards, but not very far. So keep that in mind when you try to pull a trailer with this. And something else I figured out, and we will wait till we get over there, and I'll show you another cool feature that I never noticed, but I have noticed now. And it will help you out trying to determine where your loads are. And I really like this feature. I uh, wish I'd have known about it or noticed it earlier. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. But it would have saved me a lot of hassle. Okay, let's get up out of here so I don't accidentally hit the X and send me back. And I got this fully restored, repaired, and brought it back up so it's good to go. It has all of its repair points. Uh, one thing about the Western Star here. If you have... Let me stop the engine so I don't waste my fuel. If you have the crane on it and you have the flatbed on it, you cannot pull the trailer. The hitch is too far under the flatbed for you to pull a trailer so uh, remember that when you if you want to use this configuration now without the crane the yellow crane on there you can pull a trailer no problem meaning one of these trailers or a fuel tanker or uh, you can you can pull the ramped flatbed with this but you can't do it with the crane on it also and we're talking about the Western Star there so what was I talking about when I said another cool feature okay if you look up in the upper right hand corner uh, let's get some blue here so you'll see that the tin hut requires one metal beam and one concrete slab so if I go into my map 
I know that over here somewhere right here I have some equipment on it so I have some supplies but I don't know what those supplies were and what you can do is you can go down here to the ramped flatbed and that's not the one I need so I keep going down to the next ramped flatbed and it will show me what I have on here and this right here this can either be concrete blocks or it could be concrete slabs I don't know which one but if you look over on the right you will see these yellow arrows next to some of these trailers what that is telling me is that those arrows contain the supplies that I need to do this mission so this sideboard trailer it contains uh, it, it can either be concrete slabs or concrete blocks but I know that it contains concrete slabs because the yellow arrow over there is telling me I need that for the mission I hope that makes sense so let's go up here and look at uh, let's look at another trailer this sideboard trailer now this one is empty so it contains nothing that I need that one's empty but it has something on it okay and it looks an awful lot like the same symbol that is on this one uh, symbols are a little bit different but some of the symbols look the same uh, they have two different loads that have the same symbol uh, so I know that trailer has nothing that I need this trailer does so I go up here and that trailer has something I need for this mission this trailer here also contains something I need for the mission or I can get the mission supplies from this trailer or that trailer also the scout flatbed also contains something that I can use for this mission so hopefully that makes sense to you <clears throat> excuse me it makes sense in my brain uh, like this sideboard trailer here it contains well actually this is the symbol for blocks so it contains the blocks and though I know I need it for the second part of the mission it doesn't have an arrow because it's not a metal beam or concrete slab so let's go over to another mission uh, Dyson diesel and well, we can't track that one can't track that one yet either any of the ones that you can track you can do that for okay so I can accept that one and I'm tracking it now so right now you'll see the arrows have disappeared from some of these uh, I still have an arrow here because that contains metal beams this sideboard trailer contains metal beams and this scout flatbed contains metal beams so that's how those arrows over there work on the right so again hope that makes sense uh, makes sense in my brain sometimes things that make sense in my brain don't make sense to others but you can also click on so if I click on that metal beam even though there are metal beams in trailers on this map it is telling me I have to go back to Island Lake to get the metal beams it's telling me I have to go to Smithfield Dam to get the concrete slabs same with concrete blocks so that's an easier way to figure out if you have a trailer or if you have the supplies on the map that you're working So let's start the engine and I'm going to run over to 
Click on Tan Hut and it needs to go to Drummond Bridge. So that's basically just come down the road, keep following the road. And I'm going to have to bring three different loads over here. And this is one of those missions that you have to do everything in order. So I can't drop these concrete blocks off until I drop off one beam and one concrete slab. So if I had, and I may try this, um, I do not have PowerPoint on my personal laptop, uh, but if I had PowerPoint on my personal laptop, I could do a heck of a graphic to put in here to show you exactly what I was talking about. Come on. Yeah, so it's either something they've done to the roads, something they've done to the loads to make them heavier, or maybe it's just the engines. They have reduced the amount of power the engines have, but something has definitely changed and the trucks do not seem to go as good as they did before the update. And the game does give us a pretty good size parking lot down here that you can pull multiple vehicles into. And be able to get the uh, trailers turned around. This one I just need to keep the edge in there. Okay, so I know I'm going to need concrete slab and two more metal beams, or two metal beams. So where is the P-16? It is over here. And I've done forgotten which trailer. Yeah, so I don't need anything off that trailer. However... Right over here is a trailer that holds slabs and one concrete. And it is close to where I want to go. So let's go with the P-16. And attach this trailer.
And now that I've thought about it, it might be an issue. They may have made the engines uh, less powerful on a lot of the vehicles. I don't know. But they're definitely different. It's definitely different in this playthrough than it was in my other one. And I need to come down here. Where is my... No, my ramp flatbed's over there. So get rid of that. Come down here. And down there. Let's get loaded up with fuel first. And since I don't want to use, I don't want to spend three dollars a gallon in fuel. I'm going to use the tanker that's sitting over here. So get out of that fuel station. Fuel carrier semi. Because that is a discoverable trailer. I discovered it. So it is mine to do whatever I want to with it. Which means all the fuel in it belongs to me also. So my other playthrough, I drove this truck around for a while, I did some missions with it, and then I ended up selling it. The reason I sold it was because there's another P truck, it is the P-12. And though I like this truck, I like the P-12 even better, it is more versatile. Uh, you can do more things with it. It can have a high saddle or low saddle and it can also carry the maintenance add-on, the big one. It is also all-wheel drive and the only thing that it that makes this truck better would be it has a shorter wheelbase. The P12 has a much longer wheelbase but you can put different tires on it. Uh, you can do a lot more with it and this one seems to have more just all out grunt. And the P-12 is not something you can find in the game. You actually have to buy it. And if I'm not mistaken, it's around $140,000 for it. But I did use it a lot in Alaska. And in Russia. Not a lot, but I used it a good bit in Russia. Mainly for the maintenance add-on that I could put on it. It carries a lot of 
repair points and a lot of fuel. So I need to go down here for my ramped flatbed. And in this hardcore mode, I can't sell any of my vehicles. Unless I have a duplicate of it. So I'm only allowed to have one vehicle of each kind. So I have to save up for the P12. And I don't want to spend all of my money on trucks because I'm going to go to Alaska next and there's a couple of vehicles I can find in Alaska but there's also a couple of vehicles I want to buy so I can run them in Alaska. So the P-12 is kind of low on my list of, well not low, but it's uh, not as high on my list of trucks I want to buy as some of the others. So as you can see on this trailer, it has one of the metal beams that I'm going to need and it has the concrete slabs. And the game conveniently put them near the bridge. It was awful thoughtful of them to do that. I had thought about in the hardcore mode here. Oh, that would have been bad. Definitely don't want to go that way. Uh, I had thought about doing it to where I can't use any of the loads on the trailers. So a trailer like this, in order to use it, I would have to just discard the load. And I may do that at some other point. Right now I've already started with using the loads, so I want to continue with that. It might be something I add for Alaska to make it that much more hard. Or harder. These are the only tires you can get with this vehicle. Can't get chained. Can't get road tires. This is it. And that's one of the things I, one of the reasons why I think the P12 is a little bit better. Because you have a lot more options you can do with it. It's more versatile.
Oh, I guess I could turn some lights on. It is going to be interesting to pull the construction rig trailer uh, from the dock over here back to the Smithfield Dam because when I did that mission in my other playthrough I used the P-12. Okay, make sure I give myself plenty of room to pull the other truck in. And I should be able to get around, but I'm going to pull a little bit further up. So I am short one metal beam. And I have the Western Star. So let's find out where my nearest metal beam is. I think it's right there. So sideboard trailer has something I need. Not that one. And that's it. Which means I have to come around here and pick it up. So I need to turn in there. Turn there. And turn here. And. We'll come out. That's one of the oil barrels that I have to pick up. And I'll need the big crane for, which I will do that mission next. I probably won't get it in this episode, but I may be able to get it started. I'm thinking that the trucks just don't have as much power as they used to. Which, like I said, it's okay. It just means I have to plan a little bit better and it's going to take me a little bit longer to do some stuff, but you can still do it. And there's my trail. Crap, I can't... Ah, oh, son of a... And I was just talking about how you couldn't pull a trailer with this. And it's not going to let me. Alright, so sometimes I'm not that bright. Let's 
step out of the way here. I knew that I had to drop the Fleet Star off. And I had to drop that trailer off with the Fleet Star and then come back and pick that up and I forgot. But we're close by, so it's no big issue. I believe this will open up all of the bridges now on this map. Go ahead and deliver that one. And back this up out of the way. Big rock. Attach that trailer and stop my engine and we will move over to this truck and finish our delivery. And then do the other delivery. What am I doing? On outside the box. There we go. And I've been promoted. Yay. Alright, so that's worth six grand and six hundred and forty driver points. change trucks because that opens up this part of the map and let's go over here and see what's down in here 
So I was thinking there, is that it? Nope. I was thinking there was another trailer down here. But I don't see it. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of our gray areas. So this is the road I'm going to have to pull the construction rig trailer out of. Last time I pulled it to uh, straight over to Smithville Dam from here. And I was kind of wondering if I could go through Idling Lake with it. There are some wooden bridges on Island Lake that are not very big. So I don't think that's really a viable option. So this is the same dock area that you're going to see when you go to Alaska. The only difference is Alaska, you've got a big pier that runs out here. It's not a pullable tanker. And why will it not let me hook up? Fire's a high hitch. There we go. Alright, so I know a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll wait to do this mission to the last mission they do. I'm not one of those people. Uh, I am going to go ahead and get this trailer at least over to Smithville Dam. Since I have the vehicle here that can pull it. I do believe there's another mission I have to do. Let me take a look. So, out with the old. Yeah, I still have to do 
the harbor delivery but there's nothing that says I can't go ahead and pull this construction rig trailer over to Smithville Dam that way I have it on the right map and I'm very curious to see how this truck pulls it Actually, I think it pulls it better than the E12 did. Uh, not power-wise, but the uh, shortness of it. The wheelbase is smaller. So with the P12, I had to do some backing up to get it around some of these corners. I was hoping I'd get through here, but... Oh, yeah, I can. It's not hung up on anything. It's just getting it up on the bridge. There we go. Alright, so this mission requires me to do harbor delivery first. And I have to do instruments of development before I can do that. Which is drilling equipment from Island Lake. And deliver that to the warehouse. So I think what I'm going to do is, in the next episode, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. And then do the harbor delivery, which is one more drilling equipment. And I can get that from Island Lake and bring it over here to the port. And then that will open it up for out with the old. Uh, I'll need this semi-trailer and I need two metal beams and an oil rig drill so that's three trucks in all and I do have three trucks that can pull these two loads and in this truck pull that one so I think that's what we'll do because this is eleven thousand dollars for this one and the harbor delivery is almost five grand and this one is almost six grand So that will give me enough money to comfortably show you what I'm going to do. All 
I'm going to buy another truck. And I have enough money, I believe, now to go ahead and buy the truck. I just don't have enough money to upgrade it. So the only other truck that I really want before I get to Alaska is... Come on. The little cat. So this is the little cat. So it's a caterpillar. And it is a very decent truck. Uh, I like this truck, especially running it on Michigan map. I was going to buy it, and I decided I wanted the Lodestar first because I need a good scout vehicle. But then I will buy... When I have the money, I will buy this one and get it upgraded. The next truck on my list to buy is this one. Yep, oh, don't want to purchase it yet. So this truck, it doesn't look like much. And you cannot get all-wheel drive with it. But when I get to Alaska, this is going to be one of the main trucks I drive in Alaska. Because uh, there are a lot of roads in Alaska. And I can get snow tires on it. Uh, the chain tires. And once you get this fully upgraded and you put these chain tires on it, the 43s, all the way around, uh, this truck can go anywhere where there's a road and even through some mud. And it's actually pretty fun to drive. So those are the next two vehicles I'm going to purchase. And there are some others uh, that I will get. Uh, this one I can find, this one I can find, and the Dairy Longhorn I can find. I've driven this one. I don't really care for it that much. The Freightliner is okay. When I have the money, I want to get the Freightliner because it does do well. The uh, M916. I don't like it because it steers really fast and it's hard to control. I will find this one on the map on Alaska and find this one in Alaska. So I know where these are. And I also know where this one's at, this one's at, and that one's at. General ideas. Because I don't remember exactly. That one I know exactly where it's at. But these two, eh, I'm not sure which map they're on. But we'll find all of those. So that will do me for today. Uh, I would appreciate any feedback. So let me know what I'm doing well. Let me know what I need to work on. And in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and get this truck. And with the construction rig trailer over to Drummond Island at least. And then start doing these other two missions. So if you liked the video, leave a like. And I will see you in the next episode. So until then, have a good one.